Welcome to the Crypto Teacher Stock Channel. And guys, I know everywhere we're seeing stock market crash, stock market crash, stock market crash. And even myself, I had to change my projections because what did they do? They priced in the correction already. So yes, are we going to take a little depth around election time? Yes, but it's not going to be as big. And especially if we get a stimulus package, we're actually going to be going up. But let's get into the recap, guys. Welcome to the Crypto Teacher Stock Channel. And guys, please like and subscribe if you do like what you're listening to. Please inform your friends and family and spread all over social media. It is imperative that we get back to learning finances and understand how the world really works. Because once we understand how the world really works, we understand that everything is planned out. And guys, we're going to do a recap for this week so therefore we can get ourselves in position. Remember, I am not your financial advisor. This is not financial advice. Please do your own research. But we definitely have a big week. We have Hylion. Uh, basically, right now, they're going to be voting tomorrow to whether uh, Tortoise is going to actually do the actual merger. So, guys, if this happens, of course, he'll be uh, the youngest billionaire. And then, of course, we, we're looking at electric cars, guys. So, electric trucks. So, we know where this is headed. I've been over this time and time again. But EV is where it's at. Now, we also have Workhorse. To watch out for whether they get the United States Postal Service billion dollar contract. So we have to keep a close eye on that. Remember, guys, I have the links in my first video of the NASDAQ and New York Stock Exchange IPOs. So basically, it's going to give you the dates, how much, all that good stuff, and those links. So make sure you go check those out and save them. Now, also, guys, we have ChargePoint EV charging stations. Remember, that's going to go public. And then also, we have Palantir. Remember, Peter Thiel's company, the CIA software. That's September 30th. And I feel like that's going to be probably the easiest money you'll ever get because it's going to be a straight listing. We don't have to worry about the IPO. Now, guys, the stocks to look at, remember, I advise you, airlines, and cruise lines, any travel stocks are those stocks that you can hold on to and ride them up because they are way, way off of their highs because of the shutdown. So the fact that we're starting to see, even though they still have the C word in the media, we're still starting to see things free up. So definitely travel is going to start picking up. And of course, those stocks are going to pick up. Now, I've been over the actual gambling stocks. Uh, basically, I went over that Rush Street is going to do their IPO. I have, of course, you have DraftKings. Like I stated, it's already topped out. But guys, make sure the, the people behind these companies, that's, that's where your research comes in at. So when we look and see who owns these companies, the shareholders, we see Disney, and then also we see George Soros. So, guys, they know the avenue where we're headed. Same thing when we look at the electric tr trucks. They know where we're headed. It's all tech, guys. Remember, 70% of the stock market is tech. So, the fact is that basically, of course, Disney owns what? ESPN. So, just make sure we're connecting the dots, like I said, when we're doing uh, research. And then also, Caesar Entertainment is going to be big because we know... That's the house for the casinos. So, guys, we have Hylion, we have Workhorse, and we have Palantir. So we have to make sure we're staying up on the news, guys. These are big money opportunities. But, guys, that's all I have for you. Don't forget about to like and subscribe, and please spread this channel everywhere. And y'all have a wonderful day. Port, the drive functions there and boost efficiency. We'll have a, a drive of that and get the details on the new axle that is now just starting to be available for order. So come along. The best way to describe it is, I mean, two years ago, uh, we were still in the development phase. We were working on the technology. Now we're at a standpoint where we've got over a half a million miles driven on our trucks. So uh, it's you can order it? You can. Okay. Yeah. So okay. We, uh, we're running our flagship fleet program right now, which is 
Uh, we're working with about a dozen fleets, and um, and those are going to be the early adopters, the initial fleets that we're rolling the technology out. So you've got a conventional diesel tractor that's been converted over to now being a hybrid electric diesel. So you've still got your you know full Detroit full diesel engine up in the front, but now you've got an electric battery pack, a cooling system, and a controls box mounted onto the frame rail. And in terms of the drive axles, you've got a purely diesel drive axle here, and then your rear axle is now a purely electric axle. So you've got two independent sources of energy. Uh, and the, the diesel axle is still your primary drive, but when the vehicle is going to accelerate or it hits an uphill, the electric axle now kicks in and takes some of the load off of the diesel engine, which then reduces the amount of fuel the truck's consuming. We've got a, uh, an air conditioning system that when you're driving down the road, we use it to cool your battery pack. But when you're stopped at a rest area, you can switch the system over to use that air conditioning to actually cool the cab. Uh, we also have uh, in-cab heating and uh, an inverter so that you can run all of your, you know, your iPhone, your TV off of, uh, off of our battery pack. When, uh, when Dan's accelerating, uh, this emblem will turn green. And when it turns green, that means that the electric axle is kicking in and it's applying power. When this emblem turns blue, it means that it's doing regen braking. So it's actually capturing energy off that, off that axle and charging up the battery pack. Uh, when it's white like it is now, that means the axle is doing nothing. It's just coasting, it's along for the ride. Um, and then on the left side of the screen, we've developed what we call eco driving which is a, a tool that we use to encourage drivers to be more fuel efficient in their driving. Uh, so as they do light acceleration or they're coasting the vehicle, they'll actually accumulate points uh, and, and create a higher eco score for their driving. And uh, as you accumulate more points, we have a, a driver rewards program that we incentivize the drivers to be more fuel efficient drivers. Electric vehicle stocks are racing higher today, and there's a new player that just got their ticket to ride. Our Phil Lebeau joins us now with the Lordstown Motor CEO, Steve Burns. Phil. Thank you, Melissa. Let's bring in Steve Burns, who is the founder and CEO of Lordstown Motors, joining us from the company's facility that they're still working on in Lordstown, Ohio. Uh, Steve, just to bring the audience up to speed, you guys announced uh, a SPAC IPO deal today with Diamond Peak Holdings, valued at $1.6 billion. Uh, you expect it to close in the fourth quarter. How did this all come together, and how long were you guys uh, in talks with Diamond Peak, so to speak? Uh, we started looking at SPACs. You know, COVID kind of put the brakes on some of the private funding we were talking to, so we started talking to SPACs maybe three months ago. We interviewed four or five of them. Uh, I, I did find out that all SPACs are not created equal, and uh, you've got to find one that's a good fit. And Diamond Peak, uh, their CEO really... Uh, melded with our our vision and our team, so it took about two and a half months to get uh, get it to this point. Did you see greater urgency once you saw the reaction uh, that the market had to what's happened with Nikola? Now you have Fisker; they've announced their own SPAC. Uh, did you see a greater urgency to say, "Hey, let's get this done as quickly as possible"? Well, you know, I I, I have to be honest. You know, it does seem like Wall Street goes from thing to thing and you know, peaks and valleys. And uh, if we were going to do it, we wanted to do it Why it was, uh, the appetite was there. And we really felt like we differentiated ourselves from the others that had come out. You know, we have a factory and a prototype and we're marching towards production. And so we thought it was uh, suitable for, for a SPAC and, and to be up on the NASDAQ. Steve, what's your reaction when you hear critics? And they're on our air. There were a couple on today who were saying, look, this is a frenzy that's going on when it comes to these EV-related SPACs. And at the end of the day, the investor is going to get burned, that there is just not going to be the kind of return that many people may be expecting from these SPACs. Well, at the end of the day, we have to make a great truck. If we make a great truck and we have happy customers, no matter what our financing facility is, we, you know, we'll be successful. So. Look, this is capital-intensive business. We, uh, we bought a full-functioning factory from General Motors, uh, 2,000 robots. I think you can see some of them behind me here. Uh, the prototypes are running great, and we've got a great team. So, uh, you know, we can't really look at, uh, at, at how others are doing. We just have to march towards our, our production date. We've got 27,000 orders. We've got customers really, really wanting the truck. You know, there is no electric pickup truck out yet. So... Uh, there needs to be one. And that behind you, I think, is that the endurance behind you? A 